morning, everyone. If our children will come forward, we'll have a share a little word with our children. Hey guys, you want to come up and have a seat here? We'll talk for just a second, real quick. There you go. All right. Good. Yep. You good? That's good. That'll work. That'll work. It's all good. <laughs> so guys, what is today? It's a special day. What's today? Huh? Father's, Father's Day. Day. That's right. That's a very special day. You know, we get so much from our parents and from our fathers, um, and sometimes we don't even know it or realize it until we're a little bit uh, older. Uh, that we um, there's all kinds of things, the ways that we think and ways that we do things and things that we like um, that really is influenced by our mom or our dad. And I want to show you a picture. So that's my father. Right? I got a lot from my father. Dashing good looks. <laughs> As you can see. Right? Right? right. <laughs> my father loves to, uh, love to work with his hands and, uh, and build things. And I got that from him. I love to do that as well. But you know, this picture was taken when he was in the army. And he was a paratrooper. You know what paratroopers are? It's people who jump out of airplanes with parachutes, of course. <laughs> okay. And then the parachute fly. Yeah, yeah, they take them down to the earth real slow and carefully. And uh, so he was a paratrooper. You know what else? I was a paratrooper in the Army also. <laughs> and I was influenced by my father uh, in that. So it's kind of funny the way that uh, we get things from our fathers and from our parents. And again, there's probably things you may already notice, but you'll notice more and more uh, the older you get, uh, trust me. Uh, so I just want to make sure um, that we realize how important our fathers are uh, in our lives and that we make sure today to say, say thank you uh, to our fathers uh, because they love us and we love them. And today is a special day. And another good thing to do today is also thank God uh, for our fathers and our mothers and our families and to say a little prayer uh, today uh, for, your, for your father and in thanks for your father. Okay, will you do that? Say thank you, Dad. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dad. Let's say it together. Thank you, yeah. Dad. All right. So you guys, uh, we're going to pass the peace. And uh, you remember this part of it, when I shake my stove and make a silly face, that you uh, say the peace of Christ, let the peace of Christ be with you. So let the peace of Christ be with you. So let the peace of Christ fill your hearts. To this peace we're called as a single creation, welcoming of all. Let the, the peace, peace of Christ, Christ be with you. With you. And also with you. And let us stand and exchange words of, and gestures of peace with one another. You guys can go downstairs to Sunday school. <laughs> say uh, first a welcome to our visitors and uh, if you're here for the first time or you haven't been here in a long time if you want to introduce yourself tell us what your name is and where you're from um, that'll help us uh, know who you are and remember, and remember it anybody want to do that yeah Jim and Linda Warren we're visiting from Jackson City we've been before we've been a while so yeah. we're glad to be back well it's great to have you back <laughs> I'm feeling better every day. I don't know about y'all, but you know, I think we're doing pretty good. <laughs> to be able to be back is, uh, is great. And Pat, it's great to have the Monroes back. <laughs> it's great to have the Monroes back, absolutely. Yes, it is. And several others as well. Thank you. Um, so, happy Father's Day, uh, first of all. Let me say that. Um, there, We've been trying to ramp things up Sunday by Sunday, change a few things. Um, you now have uh, hymnals and Bibles in your pews, but you also have... Uh, visitor cards and things like that in your pew rack and pens. Um, I told everybody to fill out their uh, prayer request last week and they had the little sticker in the bulletin, but they didn't have any pens to fill it out with, so that's really kind of a problem. So we're getting there. There's also information for most of you, it may not be in some of your pew racks, about uh, Tidely, which is an uh, app uh, that you can donate online 
and make it easier for you if you want to, uh, to use that. Um, next Sunday, we hope to have a service in the gardens, which we did all last year, and it's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful experience. Um, we also hope to welcome uh, Reverend Kathy Hamrick, um, who will be uh, filling in uh, for me um, while I'm on sabbatical this fall. Uh, so she'll be with you for, you know, about three months, not quite. And um, uh, we're also going to have a picnic uh, after the service next Sunday. Um, so the church is going to provide fried chicken and drinks, and you're invited to bring your specialties for potlucks and picnics. Yeah, Warren? Uh, should we bring chairs? Um, bring your own chairs if you're comfortable with that, but we will also have the black folding chairs available uh, that you can use those as well. And there are some benches and rock walls and things like that to sit on as well. Or if you just want to bring a blanket and put it on the ground, that, that'll work too. So it's a, it's a nice setting uh, for service. All right. Any other announcements? Yeah, Judy. Um, I know Judy does. Judy is going to talk to us about our um, renovation of the outside. So this is a, just a little bit of update on the renovation of the exterior of the church and of the manse as well. So we have just gotten our building permit and we have uh, ordered our major materials and um, some of them will begin actually arriving next week. Uh, I really want to thank Emery Smith who is one of our members who has really been managing this project for us and um, has really helped to move it along. Um, we are hopeful that we can begin the project in mid-July, mid to end July, and which is only about a month from now. And hopefully the church will have a bit of a new look when Pat comes back from uh, uh, his sabbatical. So we have a journey of renewal for Pat, and we also have a new building being updated, which we will hope to last us for the next uh, 30 or 40 years. I'm not sure whether Pat is going to ask glasses for the next 30 or 40 years in case we know about You never can tell. Uh, so this project started out at about $185,000. Um, and we had a lead donation of $25,000 and it allocated $35,000 from our um, existing capital funds, which we have raised over the last, um, uh, I think the last capital drive we had was in, um, 2016, 2017, and so we have some funds left over from that, and we are also using those for the project. So that left us about $125,000 to raise. And back in the back, there is a presentation, and that's what it talks about. And also back in the back, there is the colors of the materials we're using, so you can go back and take a look at that. Uh, but we all know that construction is a little nuts, and prices have gone up a lot, so we went back and reevaluated our, our project, original projections and increased them by about $45,000. So our current target is $230,000. Um, and so that's kind of, we've, you know, I think we may come in a little bit less than that. Um, I'm hoping that we come in a little bit less than that. We have some contingencies in that number. Uh, but right now, that's where our target is. Um, and so, today we have raised about 103000 including our lead, do lead donation. And given the amount that we have our, from our capital fund, that's a total of 138000 So we're still looking for $90,000. And I really want to thank you, the people that have donated so far. It really helps us plan. Um, we're really appreciative of that. And, uh, um, but we're hoping that we can have all the, part all the congregation participate in this, no matter for what size. Um, essentially, if, you know, if you consider this your home, then we're doing your home. If this is your second church home, we will really appreciate you and we know that you're part of our church community. Currently, about 25% of our church community has donated to this and we are again really thankful about this. But as we approach the construction date, uh, we hope that you can find a way to help us um, bring this project home. Um, if there's any questions, please feel free to ask me, Dave Jemison, or any of the session members, or even Pat, um, and we'll be glad to answer your um, uh, uh, questions. 
as I said, there are brochures in the back, and you know, uh, there's also a place I Pat mentioned tightly, so I'm going to mention tightly again too. There's a place to designate uh, the capital donation on that as well. So, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, in another month, we'll begin to see uh, some changes coming. Yeah, yeah. If you have any questions, uh, even Pat. He <laughs> won't be able to answer your questions, but I can give it a shot if you want to. <laughs> so our gathering words this morning are from uh, Tao Chin, and um, this is from the 5th century, uh, from China, um, and his poetry really marks the beginning of the wilderness poetry in China, which is a whole genre of, uh, po of poetry in China, and I've read this stuff devotionally, uh, for many, many years, and I really like it. Um, it re reflects a blend of both uh, Taoism and Buddhism, so uh, here we go. <laughs> it's all an empty boat, oars dangling free, but return goes on without end. The year begins, and suddenly, in a moment's glance, mid-year stars come back around, bright sun and moon bringing all things to such abundance. North woods lush, blossoming, Rain falls in season from hallowed depths. Dawn opens, summer breezes rise. No one comes to this, into this world without leaving it. It's our inner pattern, which never falters. At home here, in what lasts, I wait out life. A bent arm, my pillow, I keep empty, whole. Follow change through rough and smooth, and life's never up or down. If you can see how much height fills whatever you do, why climb hua or sung peaks of immortality? I invite you to join with me in our call to worship from Psalm 9. <clears throat> the Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed. A stronghold for the time to And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not And let us pray. O Lord of life, through our paths, though our paths be sometimes hard and rocky, your presence continues to abide, even when we, when we don't feel it. So in faith, we will continue to walk and wait for your presence to be revealed. Spirit of Christ, amen. So our gathering music, Bob, our gathering music is Water Our Lives, and you have it there in your bulletin. So Bob will play it through once and we'll sing it a couple of times.
Take it away, Maestro. Traumas. It really has. 
again amplified by this season of sickness with all of its losses. And our collective journey, blown and battered as we despair, will the ship go down? <laughs> and yet we've been here before. Um, not exactly the same, but something like it, uh, many times. And we have prevailed, we have recovered, though the least among us have sometimes paid the price uh, for that, a sacrifice to our raging seas. You know, the disciples, uh, in a state of panic, <laughs> struggling against the storm and sea, <coughs> sought the deliverance of their captain, and they found him asleep <laughs> on a pillow in the stern in the back of the boat if you will teacher do you not care that we are perishing <laughs> and that question really kind of uh, shows or reveals their true condition when we are overwhelmed and uh, in our fear and in our distress uh, we feel utterly alone and we feel isolated within ourselves uh, we are perishing here and no one seems to care. And uh, rarely, though, that is entirely, entirely true. You know, through the years, as I've uh, counseled persons who are facing times of uh, distress or grief, I have often encouraged them in their anger toward God. <laughs> now, there's uh, telling them that it's uh, all right. It's all right to be angry at God. There are two convictions that guide me in this. First, that God can handle it. Our anger is not something that can divert God's love from us. And second, God's reception of that anger, our true feeling in a time of loss or crisis can transform first our own sense of what God is and who God is and our relationship um, with God. The anger passes, and we are left with a feeling that we have been heard and received and embraced. Jesus, having been awakened, and I can imagine him, you know, still sleepy-eyed, maybe a little puffy, maybe he stretches, you know, uh, he stretches out. And then he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Silence yourself and be silenced. That's the way it reads. Silence yourself and be silenced. And the wind ceased. And there came a great calm. You know, I'm still uh, very much on my way. I don't know about you. Maybe some of you have arrived. I'm, uh, I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm still on the journey. Um, not yet across. Not yet into the beyond. Um, and my boat doesn't have to be sinking for me to sometimes panic <laughs> and despair and accuse. And that's all right, I think. Yet I have been here before also. And so I know that there is a great calmness available to me, if I will allow it. A silence that silences the winds and rebukes the storms. It is a presence that sometimes is the only thing that can see us through. There's a great song. Uh, it's, it's not in our hymnal. It's going to be in the new hymnal. Um, but it's called Be Still My Soul. Anybody know that song? Be Still My Soul. Um, it was introduced to me by a parishioner and a friend in Atlanta, my first uh, call. And... Uh, she was a friend, she was actually the mother of a, a classmate of my a school, high school classmate of mine. So I'd known the family for quite some time. But I visited her and, and accompanied her in the last few months of her life. And she was a wonderful lady. She was from Canada, by the way, uh, Judy. And uh, <laughs> wonderful lady and strong in her faith. And uh, she, I, I think she comforted me more than I comforted, <laughs> comforted her. Um, but there's a great line in that song that says this, Be still my soul, the waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Lovely, I've always liked that line. 
There's another great hymn um, that is in your hymn book, and I think it's the strongest uh, hymn in our hymn book, and it says this, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, shadowed beneath Thy hand, may we forever stand, true to our God, true to our native land. If you're not familiar with those words, they are found in the song uh, that is actually our closing hymn today. Lift every voice and sing. So remember that while we are while we are singing that. I feel like I should do shaving a haircut too good. That's the that's all I got. So but anyway. <laughs> so uh, we do have some prayers uh, or some requests for prayers. Um, we ask your prayers for the family and friends of uh, Silas Barrier, um, who passed away in a car accident, a young man, um, this past week. Um, prior, prayers for Sally and Jim Russell and their family um, upon the death of their son, Chasen, who died in the kayaking uh, accident uh, this past week. Um, continued prayers for health for Kim Reisner, uh, Reisner Tyndall, uh, Judy Hall, and Mindy Cole. Uh, Virginia had a concern for the heat and the dryness that we abide by our water restrictions. <laughs> and, for, and Judy will be taking names. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Virginia we will be taking names. For Judy Thompson's friend Donna, who had surgery on the 15th. <clears throat> and this new holiday that we have, Juneteenth. This may be part of a uh, reckoning, but also an awakening. Um, of our life together and how we can uh, uh, improve uh, that life together in our country. Any other requests uh, for our prayers this morning? Yeah. Pastor, I wonder if I could just say a few words about Jim Russell. Please do. <laughs> Jim was one of the most decorated veterans of the Vietnam War. He served on a swift boat in the Mekong Delta. He was on the boat with Senator John Kerry. And he used to tell us stories at the American Legion Post 12 about being fired at from both sides of the river by the Viet Cong and the yeah. Viet Minh. Um, he lived. He lived through that. It's appropriate today in the sermon on the raging waters. Chasen was killed on the Crystal River, which runs from Carp from Marble to Carbondale. It's one of the wildest untamed rivers in Colorado. He was lost in a place called the Grinder, and the uh, search and rescue were unable to recover his body uh, because of the water was so turbulent and so wild and raging. Um, and he had only been married, what, for four or five days, so it's a double, triple tragedy yes. in, my, in my view. So, and Sally, we'll probably talk about Sally tomorrow at Senior Lunch and share our memories of her with, with the senior lunch people. Um, I talked to Jim Friday, and uh, he was in Denver on his way to Aspen, and uh, it'll be a very difficult trip yeah. for both he and Sally. So, yeah. our prayers. Absolutely. If you have other prayer requests, you can write them on the little uh, sticky note that's in your uh, bulletin, and I'll take them up, put them up here, and when you come up for your offering, just a uh, Pick one of those up and put it on your refrigerator or mirror and remember to pray for that particular uh, request all week. So, yeah. been very pleasant how they organized it and I've been over there 
visiting Maryland Branch and Eileen Burns who've been working yes. both weekends for security and just sitting there listening and we went to the, put our chairs up yeah. in the woods there and listened and it's it's sparse, it's not it's crazy, but still just safety. Good. And they've had a little cloud cover, so that's gotta be nice as right. well. Anybody else? Alright. Put these up here. Again, you're welcome to uh, pick one up for your prayers this week. You can check out my dad's picture. <laughs> see that I truly am, you know, come from handsome people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know about any other prayers? Let us pray. <clears throat> God of grace, who suffers when we suffer, who includes and is present in all creation, in our life and our evolution and in our suffering. We are hurting and we cry out to you for the inspiration, hope, and courage to care for the least of these, our brothers and sisters. We are tired of lies, tired of excuses, tired of blaming others, tired of strategies of division instead of paths to empathy, inclusion, and compassion. Have mercy on us as a people on the verge on the threshold to compassion or complacency. We are overwhelmed as we try to imagine the future of our society, and as we try to imagine the fear and trauma of our elderly and our children in jeopardy. When was it, Lord, that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison, or enslaved, and visited you. Forgive us our acquiescence, and embolden us to stand up, to speak up, and to act up. Bless us in our care for one another, and for all peoples, and for all creatures of this good creation. And so we pray as Jesus our Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you also to stand and pray with me our offering prayer. Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. Please bring forward your offerings.
So please stand for our doxology and remain standing for our closing hymn.
so afraid to look at ourselves when that is the way to freedom. So let us look long and deep and know that whatever is hurt can be healed, whatever is broken can be mended, and whatever is lost can be found. And slow, so let us rest in God's blessing. Amen. God bless you. Let us go in peace.